getting our piece of the pie. The latest on the David and Goliath battle on Wall Street centered around GameStop. A San Diegan has died from the UK coronavirus variant as the highly contagious strain continues to spread. We just want our kids to be able to go back to school. Opening schools back up, why some parents are signing up to work inside the classroom. It's pretty creepy to feel like you've been violated in that kind of manner. Thieves are using keyless entry to break into your car. Plus, a powerful weather system tearing through California is right on our doorstep. News 8 starts now. We've seen it wreak havoc across California, and now it's heading straight towards San Diego. Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. A powerful weather system called an atmospheric river is expected to settle over the county in the next few hours. Today, crews and homeowners got to work preparing for the possibility of heavy rain, even flooding, putting out sandbags and clearing vegetation. Meanwhile, some areas are still dealing with the aftermath of the last storm. Meteorologist Sean Stiles is in for Carlene tonight. He's tracking the system. Sean, when are we going to finally see the rain here in San Diego? It's getting close, isn't it? Well, Carlo, as you look over my shoulder here, you'll notice that there is a lot of green on the screen right here. This is literally a plume of moisture that is just now making its way through the Orange County area and just touching the northern parts of San Diego County around Oceanside. At this point, no rain being reported on the ground. That was as, as of about 15 minutes ago, but anything's possible. And look at how vast and wide and stacked with rain this storm is. And this isn't a frontal boundary that's coming through like this. This is a plume of moisture that's coming up from the south and west, and it will be training across Southern California over the next 24 hours. We've got a flash flood watch out for much of San Diego County, basically west of the mountains. And as far as rainfall totals, by just after midnight, this storm will move in quickly. And by the time we wake up in the morning, we're talking about one, possibly two inches in the mountains, and certainly in the afternoon, two inches of rain around Julian, 2.45 inches expected. Tomorrow, a big rain day, most of it coming overnight, but then there'll be sh shots of it moving throughout the day. 61 on Saturday, 66 on Sunday, so the weekend we get a chance to dry out, but boy, this is going to be a powerful storm with lots of flooding, so get prepared. It's on its way. We'll give you more details in just a bit. We have an update on the bizarre and expensive battle between ordinary investors and hedge fund billionaires that we've been following all week. Today, the popular online trading app Robinhood temporarily banned users from selling stocks for GameStop and other companies at the center of this power struggle. News 8's Richard Allen has reaction from a local woman who says the app cost her big bucks, and he also takes a look at legal action possibly being taken. Well, that's right. This struggling brick and mortar retailer is ground zero of a tug of war between small time investors and the Wall Street elite. Right before my very eyes, I'm seeing the stock go down, 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 and I can't do a thing. I Lemon Grove no resident way. and amateur investor Linda Friesen is one of thousands of users of the online trading app Robinhood, whose recent investments in stocks like GameStop and AMC sent those shares temporarily soaring this week until Robinhood restricted trading in those stocks earlier today. They're telling me they're trying to protect my investments. No, they just screwed me. This move by Robinhood and other retail brokerages was an attempt to tamp down the buying frenzy this week that centered around GameStop, the failing video game retailer. An online Reddit forum called Wall Street Bets helped galvanize the mass movement by most small-scale investors, who also received encouragement from Elon Musk to buy into GameStop, driving up the stock price as a way of forcing big Wall Street investors to take a loss. You have this concerted effort by these groups and chat rooms that instead of a few individual investors, you have thousands of investors that are taking the other side of a, of a trade um, and actually causing some heartburn, some of these hedge funds that are uh, now on the other side of that trade. Those hedge funds had seen the ongoing decline of GameStop as an opportunity by attempting to short sell the stock, a widespread and legal practice. Unlike normally when we want the stock to rise, short sellers are betting the market or a, uh, a, a individual stock will fall and profit from that particular move. 
In this David and Goliath battle, though, the small investors managed, at least temporarily, to drive up the stock price dramatically, forcing some big-time investors to take massive losses. While last year GameStop traded at less than $20 a share, it closed at nearly $350 yesterday. Today, it closed at $197. We outsmarted the hedge fund, so how smart are they? I mean, truthfully. But CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger warns investors against speculative stock purchases like this. It's really important that you know you could lose everything you invest. And the SEC is now investigating, as is New York's Attorney General, following a class action lawsuit filed today against Robin Hood. The highly contagious UK variant is becoming more prevalent here in San Diego, and today we learned of the first local death tied to that particular strain. County officials also reported 1,489 new COVID cases for a 7% positivity rate, which is relatively low, out of the more than 22,000 tests. And COVID-related hospitalizations continue to decline, so that's encouraging news. But the number of patients in the ICU remains at 408. And 69 new deaths were reported in the county today for a total of 2,534 COVID-related deaths, with 1,000 of those deaths reported this month alone. As people anxiously wait to get their turn for a vaccine, some people are worried about vaccine tourism. That's when people who live outside of San Diego County come here looking to get vaccinated. San Diego County says it requires proof of residency or eligibility at its vaccination sites, but some providers like Sharp Healthcare say they are not verifying residency because some healthcare workers live outside the county. Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says it's not efficient to verify everyone's address. We're obviously moving at a speed uh, to try and administer so many vaccines that don't make it possible to stop the entire process to verify what every individual is showing you or telling you is 100% accurate. Meantime, hundreds of thousands of Americans and permanent residents live in Mexico, and they are entitled to get vaccinated here if they wish when their age groups qualify. County officials say they are requesting additional doses to meet that demand. Governor Gavin Newsom appears to be frustrated with resistance to efforts to get kids back into classrooms. In an article on Politico today, he is quoted as saying, quote, if we wait for the perfect, we might as well just pack it up and be honest with folks that we're not going to open for in-person instruction this school year. He wants transitional kindergarten through second grade students back in school by mid-February. But among other issues, teachers want the COVID vaccine before going back, and there's no clear timetable for that. The governor pointed to CDC guidance, though, saying opening for the youngest students can be relatively safe. Meanwhile, some North County parents are hoping to help reopen schools by stepping in as substitute teachers. Dozens have already applied for what's called an emergency 30 day substitute permit. News 8's Amanda Shotsky has the details. While so many parents are wondering when schools will open back up for in person learning and exactly what will that look like when it happens, some parents are signing up to work inside the classroom. Parents have been asking this whole time, what can we do to help? What can we do to help? We're desperate to get the kids back in school. Allison Stratton prides herself on being a very involved parent. Her son is a junior at Torrey Pines High School. I'm just the kind of parent that kind of jumps in where I think I'm needed. It was at a recent San Diego Union High School District board meeting that Stratton learned one of the greatest needs in order to go back to in-person learning is help inside the classroom. They were projecting that if they were to open the schools that there wouldn't be enough substitutes for the teachers that uh, chose not to come back. The Parent Association of North County is now encouraging parents to step in and sign up for an emergency 30 day substitute teacher permit. The position requires an undergraduate degree, fingerprinting, applications, and a background check. Stratton, who is also a web designer, got to work creating sandiguitosubstitutes.com to streamline the process. The substitute teacher pool has already gone from 10 to 60. I've submitted my application to San Diego and I'm waiting to hear back from the district. Amy Caterina has signed up but says she'd like to be vaccinated first. You have to look at your own level of comfort. 
As far as comfort in the role of teacher, parents say they would actually be playing more of a teacher's aid, facilitating inside the classroom while the teacher gives the lesson virtually. It's really important for me that my son or my daughter is back in the classroom. What can I do? to help make that happen. If you would like to find out how you can become a emergency substitute teacher, you can go to our website, cbs8.com, and just click on the link. Back to you. An Army veteran from Coronado is facing federal charges accused of storming the U.S. Capitol. Jeffrey Alexander Smith, who goes by Alex Smith, was the first San Diegan arrested in connection with the riots. Today, he made his first appearance in federal court. He did not enter a plea. News 8's Kelly Hesedal has the details. The FBI says Coronado resident Alex Smith was among the mob who stormed the Capitol January 6th. According to the criminal complaint, a witness identified Smith in this Instagram photo posted to the account Homegrown Terrorists. Smith's defense attorney, John Rice. He's a decorated uh, war veteran. Uh, he served honorably. Uh, in the Army, he was honorably discharged. Smith was arrested by the feds in Coronado yesterday. Today, he appeared in federal court. His mother and sister attended the hearing. Mr. Smith went there to attend uh, what, what he anticipated to be a very peaceful uh, rally. However, court paperwork paints a different picture. A second witness gave the feds Instagram messages. He says he received from Smith after the riots, which read, quote, I'm a patriot. Quote, I stormed the Capitol. He wrote his purpose was to send a message that Americans aren't going to take a fraudulent election. He also wrote, quote, there is no way in hell I was going to drive 38 hours from San Diego and not walk right through the front of the Capitol building. Smith was interviewed by the FBI and admitted to driving to D.C. to hear President Trump speak. He says his girlfriend met him there, but he told her to stay at the hotel instead of getting into all the chaos. The feds say Smith admits he went inside the Capitol for 30 minutes. He says he deleted his Instagram account after getting death threats for his involvement in Capitol events. I think many of the people there will tell you uh, they were kind of swept up in the moment. I think it was there was a large crowd. Uh, there was a lot of excitement. According to court records in 2018, his now ex-wife filed a restraining order against him. She now lives in Colorado with their two children. Rice says Smith's mother and sister stand behind him. They firmly believe uh, in Alex uh, and you know, they they wish uh, that that he had hadn't gone into the Capitol like like everyone does. And bond was set at twenty five thousand dollars. Smith's next court appearance is scheduled for next week. Marcel and Carlo. Thanks, Kelly. Stay with us. Still much more to come here on News 8 at 10. Your keyless remote can make you a target for thieves. I'm Abby Alford on how this is happening and what you can do to prevent it.